Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Today we will continue work on the Glasgow uh, Digital Interface Explorer board and uh, we are making some updates to the uh, hardware design from the version uh, revision C1 to revision C2, uh, as you might remember from previous streams. Uh, the hardware that we are working on is, uh, is this wonderful hardware. Huh, I just realized that this camera is very choppy, very slow frame rate. That's not good. Can I change that by any chance? Uh, I didn't realize that it was having issues. Oh, now it is completely frozen. Great. Now we don't have a desktop cam. <laughs> I shouldn't be messing around with cameras on stream. Anyway, so um, that is a bummer. Uh, does this work? Yeah, no. I would have to restart the uh, um, OBS. It's really annoying. Oh well. Anyway, so we we have to go to the face. It's like most of the stream we will be streaming anyways. The desktop here, so it's not a big deal. Anyways, so uh, technical difficulties. Just ignore it. <laughs> uh, so this is the uh, Glasgow uh, development board. Let's see if it can focus by any chance here. There we go. Uh, so, as you see, it has, uh, starting from left to right, uh, you have a USB connector, then you have a Cypress uh, FX2 uh, USB interface controller that is connected to an ICE40 HX8K FPGA that then in turn is connected to level shifters and the level shifters are getting the target voltage controlled uh, by um, by a DAC and a power supply for two banks of eight pins. And each pin can have it set to, uh, ha can have a pull up or pull down set. This is the big chips in the middle here, if you look uh, next to the aux connector. So this board is uh, essentially translating a software, a hardware problem into a software problem. The platform itself is all written in uh, Python, which is, uh, um, a framework on the computer that then communicates to the hardware and gives it a, um, a FPGA design based on your needs. So for example, if you want to implement a UART, it generates the necessary hardware to speak UART, puts it on the board, and then converts it so that you can have USB access to that US, uh, UART port. The advantage of that is that you can basically modify the hardware of your device on the fly as needed by by your application. So you are not limited by a specific set of hardware capabilities of a microcontroller, for example, and the rest you have to bit bang. Uh, and here, here you essentially implement the hardware on the fly needed for the uh, particular application. So that's the gist of Glasgow. And um, we are um, gearing up for a campaign. If you see here below, there is a Glasgow, there is a bit.ly link. Uh, this is a crowd supply um, pre-campaign page. Um, and we will be launching Glasgow hopefully fairly soon. So that's why I'm working on the hardware updates. Uh, and, um, and the changes we I'm making are not essentially uh, circuit changes, these are mostly manufacturing related changes, besides the one that we will be working on today. And uh, <laughs> so, as you might remember, we had a, I had a few rants about USB-C, <laughs> but uh, considering um, all considered, uh, I think we should give it a go and switch the USB connector to USB-C. Uh, a lot of people will be very happy about me giving in to this. Oh, now I see it is clicking here in audio. Um, so it, it is a weird glitch that I see here in audio from time to time. It's like goes to full, full throttle. Weird. Anyways, so sorry, I got distracted here for a second. But yeah, um, we are today we will be uh, switching the USB connector to USB-C. 
so this is this part. But uh, I would like to give you a little bit of an update on uh, what uh, what the uh, what the changes were that we did. Um, Tesla man, I I will get I will get uh, give give you a recap of my USB C rant uh, in a second. Uh, let me just uh, quickly go through the changes I did between the last stream and today's stream because I. Yeah, I probably could could use a compressor. Yeah, I so I have an so basically I use a lapel microphone from Sennheiser. If I can feed this through, uh, if it, the, I can put the compressor in between that in an analog path, that probably would be possible. But I think the glitch itself might be coming from somewhere in the software. But yeah, I'm not sure how to debug that <laughs> because I see it; it's going like for a second full throttle on the audio um, bar and then disappears. It's like, it's weird. I don't know where that could be coming from. Oh yeah, yeah, let's let's talk about setup. It's like, uh, Ban is the, the go my go-to person regarding uh, Twitch setups and streaming setups. She, she knows her shit, so. <laughs> There you go. Um, okay, so between last stream and this stream, uh, we have this frozen thing in the corner. That's funny. Um, we, uh, I made, uh, I made a bunch of changes. So as you remember, last time we updated the level shifters to a bigger package. Um, I think uh, that was the section that needed a lot of... No, it didn't need routing. We were finished with routing until the moment when... Um, um, yeah, I'm trying to, to now reconstruct what I did over the last week. Um, I should have written down probably a list of things that uh, changes I made. I probably should look just in GitHub uh, commits, right? So, it's uh, or even the changes here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that was the main thing. Uh, if you remember, some of the footprints didn't have round rack pads. So what I did, I the the parts in the KiCad uh, standard library don't all have round rack pads yet, which is a recommendation from IPC um, manufacturing standard uh, for the next upcoming standard set. So they will be. Um, uh, so they will be updating everything, but KiCad didn't update all the footprints yet. Uh, it would be fairly easy to change them to round rect uh, fairly automatically, but the KiCad libraries only like a, on a on a secondary level are automated and auto generated. Uh, they s use scripts to generate footprints but then they manually copy them into the library instead of having an automatic system that just generates the footprints all the time, like uh, with a CA integration, which is, I wish they would go for finally and like actually fully automate the library generation and make the script system easier to use. It's like it took a long, long time for me to wrap my head around it. Electronic EO, thank you for your follow, welcome. <laughs> Yeah, I, electronic eel. Yeah, he he is the wonderful person that made this. You will recognize this. This arrived. So yeah, this is he designed the uh, Glasgow um, tester hardware uh, for the Pogo pin tester, which we will be working on. Um, but yeah, uh, so round rect pads. That's an important change um, to for manufacturing and requirement from IPC or recommendation from my PC. Let's call it this, what it is. And so I moved the footprints that were in the KiCad library and didn't have round rect pads to our local library for hopefully eventually when KiCad updates their footprints, we can use the ones uh, that are stock. But for now, we have to keep copies with the round rect pads. We could also change them in place in the KiCad design, but that might be um, more brittle because if you update all the footprints it is more likely you will break things because then 
uh, you either have to like lock pads and do weird stuff to prevent the changes you did locally to the footprint to change. So yeah, uh, I rather put it in a local library instead. So that's what I did, one. Two, uh, this is something I can actually sh in theory show you. So we changed the footprints for the level shifters, if you remember. And they were not, uh, they were, they looked like they just matched the same footprint and it was fine. And then I realized that the courtyards around it, they were overlapping like crazy. So I went ahead, ripped up the complete area here. This, uh, this whole area got ripped up and I rerouted everything, cleaned it up and moved the vias that were on the outside to the inside because we have the space. So we saved space at the end. Uh, I think this area or the area is pretty much the same. Um, no, I think it is even smaller because width was the same of this uh, parts. I actually was able to scoot them closer together to gain even more space than we had before with the smaller packages, which is funny. Uh, so the bigger packages actually give us more space because we can put the vias under the, under the parts. So this is really cool actually. Um, so we did that. Uh, this is all rerouted. I even aligned everything nice and vertically so that it looks nice in the rendering. So if we look at the rendering, this is how it looks now. So it's nice and clean. We might, <laughs> if I'm completely OCD, I might move these so that they are evenly spaced, the resistors on the left and right, uh, top and bottom side of the board. But this is now becoming uh, very minute polishing with the fine grit stone, right? But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's all rerouted, which is nice. So the next thing I did is that was something I was really not sure what, um, what the other people in the Glasgow project will say about. Um, so my personal take on, so let me just show you really quick the previous version. Oh, I can show you the physical, the physical version. So the physical version of the board, if you look at this, uh, yeah, so let's switch to the full face version here. Uh, has all those legends, which part ID is which part ID, right? So there's a lot of like legend um, uh, on the board. Same thing on the back. There's uh, all the capacitors are labeled. And I personally think this is... N so if you think which moments is this kind of documentation <laughs> yeah, symmetry. Yeah, I, that's why I, I have to, I'm thinking of moving those resistors to keep symmetry. Um, I didn't move those resistors. They, they, the four gang are exactly in the same position where Markan uh, put them. So I, I am trying to respect Markan's sensibilities as far as I can. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, so the labeling is useful if you hand assemble the board um, and, and you want to use the labels as your reference and in certain cases when you debug the board or like try to poke around and find the right part. But from my experience, it actually is still easier to find a part if you open the PCB design files and just do, just do like find and you do uh, R10, where is R10? And then it jumps to the right part for you. And you know, oh, that's physically here. So it is next to this. So you can geographically find it on the board immediately. And so you know, oh, that's this, this part next to, the, um, next to the resistor. So it's easy to find. Uh, same thing with the HTML bomb, which we could uh, um, post. Hey, HTML bomb is not enabled anymore. So I updated. Um, um, my machine uh, from uh, to Ubuntu 20.04. So some things seem to be not gr not fully working anymore. So yeah, there is HTML bomb which we could open and that would allow us to also to find parts. So I feel there are external tools that are better for this kind of stuff. And the same space uh, on the PCB, if you look at the, um, 
at the rendering can be used very nicely for more semantic, let's say, documentation of the board. And uh, I find that a little bit more useful where it's like you show the board to someone else, they can quicker see where things are. Um, you can remember, oh, this is where this circuit is that does certain function. So having more of a semantic documentation, I find personally more useful when working, oh, uh, when working on boards. Uh, and uh, that's why I removed the uh, labels and put them, and instead on the silk screen, I put those uh, documentation regions saying, this is the circuit, which is the ADC for the A side uh, or A bank. Then you have the voltage regulator for the A bank. And then we have the DAC that there might be a, even a use to add like arrows where we see it's like, oh, this one is driving this one or this one is driving this one. And that might be useful. Then tried also to document uh, a little bit the pull up, pull down resistor section. And uh, P minus, we had uh, back and forth with, with White Quark regarding uh, how to name uh, the uh, passive mode of, uh, of this. So basically these, uh, um, IO expanders, this I square C IO is expanders, um, they basically can be set to a one, so high, this is a pull up, low, pull down, or uh, high Z, which will result in basically passive. So there is the, there is not being driven any uh, pull up or pull down through these resistors. And then we have the 10K resistors here uh, that would uh, implement that function. Uh, the problem was I was thinking of calling it high Z, but it is incorrect if these voltage uh, level shifters are um, outputs, right? So if they are outputs, they are being driven, the output, the pins, so they are not high Z, so this would be a misnomer. So P dash for basically pa passive seems like a fairly good term, unless someone of you has a better idea how to call it. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, so this is this is how it looks like now. I started adding also legends where we say what where is the FPGA, what type of FPGA it is. Um, I find that uh, useful information for uh, keeping on the silk screen. Uh, I also did. Uh, there's still more space on the back, which will we will be using hopefully for a good legend, so we can have some additional documentation of which pin, uh, which bit is which bank or something, some like, actual uh, usage information, which could be handy to have. Uh, I also labeled which resistor is for which pin on the back. Um, and these uh, connectors, actually, I am thinking of uh, trying to populate those because it is nice to uh, lower the resistance of the pull-up, pull-down by putting in a resistor parallel to the 10K resistors. So, um, uh, so yeah. So, smaller multi-channel level shifter. If you can give me a shift register uh, or level shifter that has separate channels with input output control of each bit i would love to use that <laughs> if that exists because it as far as i know it doesn't exist to have a discrete single channel um, um, direction controlled level shifter that has direction control for each single bit you can control a full bank but you can't con or four bits maybe two bits but again you, we end up in the same design as we are here so that's, uh, yeah, uh, we, may, several people tried to really hard to find a part that would integrate the level shifters into less packages, but so far we are out of luck. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's why we have them discreetly. Uh, we control each channel has its own level shifter because we want to be able to control each single pin, its direction individually. 
And there is something on the silk screen here. Ladies and gentlemen, we found some overlap. What's going on here? Uh, so I think I might have copied some silk screen here. Oh yeah. So this should be A1. <laughs> okay. So, fixed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, you know, it shouldn't be that hard to take a lead frame and put uh, eight of these uh, dies that are in these chips inside that thing and bond it out, right? It's like, uh, how hard it can that be? Why is no one making that? Please make that. Also, what we could do in this particular case, how I was thinking would be really cool to have in one package, have a shift register that we can set directions with and then have multiple uh, multiple uh, level shifters that are being controlled by that shift register. That would be a really useful package to level shift stuff. There's so many uh, projects where, oh, I need 8, 16, 32 pins that I need to control and be able to, to change directions with and have a level a level shifter that is controlled by a shift register that would save pins and it would be very useful because usually the direction you don't need to switch fast although there are plenty of applications where you do where you have like i square c for example which has to be bidirectional so a shift register might not be the right thing to use in there so hmm it probably has to end up being a single pin so eh, it's hard There should be a yearly poll where major chip manufacturers ask what people want. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, so let me see here. Maya Yoi, thank you for your follow. Welcome, thank you so much. Uh, Hangman's Moose, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome. Uh, Lola21111, welcome and uh, thank you for the follow. All right. <laughs> oh, JKT also, thank you for the follow. Awesome, thank you so much. Welcome uh, everyone uh, who is new to this uh, stream. And um, yeah, so that is pretty much the recap. Uh, one more thing I can show you though, is uh, showing you how the fab layer looks like now, because the fab layer, um, is where I usually put the labels for. So for example, I do an assembly run. A lot of the Chinese fab houses, if they do assembly, they want not only the digital placement, uh, like uh, pick and place machine coordinates, so the POS file, but also a legend, which is visual. Uh, there's not really a good exchange format in Gerber for this. So th usually you do this on the fab layer. So what I did, is move everything, all the labels on the fab layer and mark the parts in the middle of them. So you can just do take this and print this on paper and you have a really good uh, legend uh, as a hard copy. Uh, I can even disable the source screen. So there are some change. Yeah, I have to move that label. <laughs> but yeah, this, is, this will happen in another pass uh, of me cleaning up things. Um, you have not only the labels, but also the value of each part. So essentially like, what is this part? And uh, you, you can find all the information you need as a hard copy, as a PDF. So that is how I usually do things for manufacturing. This is something I would send to a, to a fab uh, for knowing where things are. Yeah, so the problem with the FPGA voltage uh, adjustment, it's like that is a reasonable thing up to 3.3 volts to do. You can just do bank, uh, uh, bank control um, and control the voltage there. The problem is uh, we want to also reach into the five volt range. And that is something we can't do with the FPGA. They cannot uh, have bank uh, supply voltage of uh, more than 3.3 volts which is a bummer. There's only very few FPGAs that are actually uh, five volt tolerant. This is the, I think, Lattice Mac XO2 uh, is one of those chips. 
but um, there are not many that can work at 5 volts, which is a bummer. There is still a lot of retro projects which would really benefit from having uh, FPGAs with 5 volt tolerance. At least tolerance, if not actual 5 volt drive. Yeah, so these are the major three things that I did. So that took 25 minutes to explain with all the tangents and distractions. Um, so yeah, um, the next thing we will do is uh, get to some working here and uh, replace this. Uh... Oh, so the question was, what was my like gist of my rant regarding USB-C? So I should probably write that down at some point. Um, so a lot of people are excited about USB-C. I find USB-C is cool, but the question, you have to always weigh a bunch of things. Um, USB-C is slightly bigger than the micro USB. It is, um, so this is something, I, I bet you bottom dollar USB consortium will come out with a micro USB-C sooner or later. It's like we will get another connector very soon where it's like, oh, it's still too big. Same story as with mini USB and micro USB where um, micro was uh, essentially Nokia forced the consortium to make a smaller connector than the mini connector because we can't fit it and compete with iPhone because we can't make it thin enough. So that's why micro came, came to be, at least according to some, some uh, investigative journalism there. Uh, and um, I'm sure this will happen with USB-C that people will complain. It's still too big. It's not fragile enough. Anyways, <laughs> so um, uh, I'm designing the Pogo pin tester. Um, yeah, so I think that will happen in the next stream. I will at least rehash what I did because I think I will order the uh, Pogo pin tester this coming week, uh, finally. I didn't want to do that until I do all this rework here because I was afraid uh, some pads might move. Um, so far, all the pads are still in the same place for the Pogo pin tester. So it might now happen that we are doing something with the USB connector. We might actually have to move the USB pads there. So uh, there you go. So to finish up the USB-C rant uh, summary, there are benefits that are good, but there, US, micro USB is established. People have cables. I will have for USB-C, I will have to use a more, little bit more expensive connector that will a little bit be more, a little bit more rugged probably than the micro USB and easier to use and more future proof, sure. But I have to now source cables because people don't have USB-C cables at home unless they happen to have a phone that has a USB-C cable. But is it just a charge cable, maybe? Is it a problem? There are even more problems with different cables with USB-C than there was with micro USB. Micro USB had two problems. You either had a charging uh, cable, which didn't have data lines in it, which is complete atrocity. Um, but then USB-C will have even more options for cables. Do you have a just charge cable, a 2.0 only cable? Do you have 3.0 only cable? Do you have a lightning cable? So as things progress, you will be digging through your bin of cables even more than you did before. So that's, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so essentially, um, the this is, yes, electronic eel. I did order c uh, connectors. Uh, yeah, and there, there are USB-C fanatics, uh, which I definitely did see uh, in, this, uh, in this whole process until I gave in, okay, let's try USB-C, let's see how that goes. And people are, some people put a lot of effort and money into replacing all of their gear so that they can use USB-C only. So uh, that's a good driver for economy, I guess, uh, where people basically, oh, I have to rebuy or modify like all of my devices because I want to use only USB-C, which is a very nice utopian thing of using just one connector and one type of cable, which is nice. I, I totally agree with that. Um, but yeah, anyways. 
we are going with USB-C for this prototype. If it doesn't work out, I will go back to the micro USB. So uh, there you go. So I did order uh, based on Electronic Eel's recommendation. Um, and I think he sent me some connectors too. Um, the, their LCSE uh, is making pretty neat connectors. Oh, my concern was using the 3.1 USB capable connectors. They are two row connectors which are, uh, I think Jared sent me a picture of his setup at some point and I don't have the link anymore. Um, is it this? Are we lucky? Yes, haha, <laughs> I still have it open in here. Cool. Uh, so uh, this is uh, Jared's design. So basically you have this footprint for the USB-C connector if you have all the pins broken out from the connector. So if you look at this and then compare it to the micro USB, uh, which one is easier to manage and make sure that you don't have shorts and reflow issues and whatnot? Uh, also, the pitch of this is uh, further, it's prob somewhat similar. It's like this is only slightly smaller, I guess. Um, but yeah, it is uh, definitely easier to manage. But people pointed out that on LCSC you can buy connectors uh, which, are, which are only one row and they are only USB 2.0 specific. So that started to change my mind a little bit. So you see this is just one, one row. So it is easier to manage. There are even worse uh, USB-C connectors where one row is SMD and the other row is through hole. Wow, that's fun. Um, but yeah, so this is this is definitely much more manageable. It still has m way more pins, and uh, it is. Uh, I have not seen a USB-C uh, 2.0 connector that has the DPs connected internally uh, yet. Um, so, um, so that I'm not sure that, and you get, you get this stubbing, you have to have stubs here. So you will see that when I lay this out. Well, if you need the power, Glasgow does not need the power. It can run fine on 500 milliamps. Uh, it's like, if you need the power and go to 24 volts, USB-C is great. This is the right application of USB-C. And it's like, if I was making a power device like a soldering iron, I would go with USB-C, 100%. Uh, but this is, this is a case-by-case -case thing where uh, you have to decide these things. And my, my personal argument and calculation, it's like, it's not worth it. And it's not really useful uh, to uh, change from micro USB to USB-C. Also adding more risk of a connector that we don't know as well yet and it's early on in its cycle, to be honest. So I was, that was my argument against USB-C, but it's like, you know what? There are some people that are so hot for this connector. Let's try it. Let's give it a shot, uh, put it on the board. A lot of people will be jumping up and down and be very happy about this. So let's, let's just do that. It's a, it's a learning experience, you know? Yeah, we are, we are. So we are putting the USB-C connector on there. So, uh, so that's, that's why we are on USB-C because today we are mounting the USB-C connector on there. Uh, yes, so this is the cool thing also, this connector, uh, this uh, LCSC connector is also, and I have two of them. Why, why did, oh, it went to the other table. So there are two, uh, I think, footprint compatible um, parts on there. So the only difference, so let me com show you the difference between the two that I got. And I will give you the link in a second. Um, so the big difference is the orientation of the part in the, in the tape. So one tape, maybe here, let's go to the face, face cam. The big difference is which way the connectors are in the, in the tape, which is interesting if you are putting it into the pick and place machine. Uh, so there doesn't seem to be a standard yet. Um, oh shoot, now I mixed them up. 
Great. I will have to review the video, which one is which. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the big difference here on the, under the microscope there is how long the, the legs are on them. So one of them has shorter legs that go into the PCB and the other one has longer legs. So that's the differentiating factor in these two, as far as I could find. Everything else seems to be correct, exactly the same. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see. Now, which one is which? Yeah, this is the short one. And the short one, I think, is the, is the type C 31M. Yeah, I think this is the order. Yep, 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 yep. I'm pretty sure this is correct. So let's move this back into the box so that I don't mix them up. It shouldn't be a problem. We should be able to, uh, to use either. All right, so let's go to here, LCSC, and the part number is up. I should show you my desktop. There we go. So this is the footprint that is even in the KiCad, uh, standard KiCad library. So that's the part. Oh wow, they have a bunch. Sync plate. But yeah, anyways, this is the part I got. Ah, there are different uh, types of mounting. There is a mid-plane mount, so basically you, you have the connector sitting in between the boards. So, ha, ah, that's an interesting one. For actual really good retainment of the USB-C connector, uh, mid-plane mount is not a bad idea because then you're pushing the connector against the edge of the PCB. So, um, uh, if we can look, maybe the mid-plane mount is showing here what that means. No, it doesn't. So essentially the PCB is mounted here and it basically pushes against the edge uh, of the board. But yeah, they are more difficult to mount uh, to solder. Yeah, I have to figure out. So the routing, so the routing was actually uh, I have a reference for that. Uh, so KiCad, uh, in the KiCad forum, someone asked about this. So this is the schematic we will be copying. Uh, I'm not sure they posted layout in here. There was a lot of uh, jibber jabber about this. But the KiCad forum has a thread about the uh, USB-C connector for 2.0 usage. So this is the schematic we will be using. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that would be it for now. Let's uh, try to put the USB-C connector in there. So first, let's go to the schematic. And uh, we have to make some space in the schematic itself and place the part or the symbol. All right, so let me catch up a little bit on the chat here. Oh, the LCSC numbers. I wanted to give you a link to that too, right? So let's do this. Uh, or maybe like, how do I do this? Like this, like this. That's a good, here you go. You got it? Yeah. I just wanted to post it in the chat, that's all, for others to be able to cut and paste easily. All right, so that is that. Cool. Um, then let's do the... USB-C. Ha ha ha! So there's a plug even, 2.0, but there's also USB-C receptacle. Oh, that's an updated one. That looks uh, nicer than in the, um, than in the, uh, in the post here. 
So this post is August 19th. So yeah, I think that was last year, yeah. So this is an updated um, symbol, which is nice. And yeah, we will call it J12 when we are done. Uh, I know that the SBU 1 and 2, I don't remember exactly what it does, but they are, they are not connected. So we can uh, do th this immediately. And then um, uh, we have USB N, so negative and positive, right? So we have to swap the position of those on here for the schematic. So we can delete this and then rename this for J, what was it? J1, right? J1, yes. And then rename that to J1. Oh, I meant to also show you something in the schematic. Anyways, that's, let's do that later. Why is there a, that's weird. Did I place that? Huh, I placed it by accident. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so we definitely need more space here in this schematic. This is a much bigger symbol. So let's move the open hardware logo a little bit out of the way. Yeah, this will be fun. I need to make more space to squeeze this in. Yeah, I want the schematic to still look somewhat decent afterwards, but I can do the actual cleanup. If I can squeeze it in now, I can do cleanup of the schematic later too. We don't have to do it uh, during the stream really. But yeah, so let's do this. So that's that's one. And we can do this, shield. Oh, interesting. So that was tab. Nope. Let's do this and then tab like this. So if you do tab, it uh, connects all the traces so that it, so you see the, the difference here. If I select something, let me select just what I need. If I select this and I do move with M, then it moves the whole thing. But if I do this and then I select it and then press tab, it connects and keeps the, the uh, wire connected, which is very useful. Uh, some of you might not know that. Okay, so that looks good. We should probably move this. Uh, also, so that grab. Why is this really weirdly off? All right, so grab. Yeah, that's a little bit cleaner. Yeah, I want to scoot it against the edge of the schematic uh, sheet as much as possible. The CC pins, I think, they are for the negotiation. I think. Uh, they can be strapped, uh, yeah, they can be strapped to with uh, resistors. This is what we will be doing here uh, to uh, have basic functionality, but when you want to negotiate, um, so CC is also used to determine what orientation the cable is in. So if you have twists in the, uh, in the differential pairs, um, but also that's why you need two separate resistors. So this is actually an interesting story there. Uh, if you look at this schematic, you have those two resistors here. Uh, Raspberry Pi used one resistor and connected this resistor to both of these pairs, which causes issue, which breaks uh, uh, inverted connection uh, capability of the USB-C cable. Uh, so that was a bug in the Raspberry Pi 
uh, 4.0 uh, with the USB-C connector. Uh, and yeah, so uh, they didn't realize that this is being used for that purpose, even though it's like the, the first Google I did, it, it was basically showing that. It's like, oh, this is what it does with the cables, and it is using a pull-up and a pull-down to figure out which orientation, what is, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was that was interesting. Anyways, uh, so let's uh, get those resistors probably going. Can we make more space here? This is taking up a lot of space, that thing. We will probably need to... Uh, that will work, almost. Let's take this. And then grab, tab. And we need to swap these. They're in the wrong order here. Like this. Uh, move. Like this, I think. Something along these lines. That's when people think they're smarter than the specs. <laughs> well, we are being trained to mistrust specs a lot, though. It's like there are plenty of specs where you're like, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I can, I can understand where that attitude might come from. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, you're right. In this particular case, it's like, you should actually read this spec and trust that it is correct. <laughs> yeah. There is a bias against, uh, some people might have against specs, though. I can understand that. All right, did I swap it correctly? So USB P duh, 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 and USB D is, goes to negative. Good, good, good. Um, then the CCs will still need some love. Can we squeeze it in? Squeeze it in. We need to definitely, come on. Uh, let me just delete this. Yeah, we need to grab this. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Okay. I still need to make more space here. C reset. So this guy probably needs to go in the left lower corner. Yeah. All right, so what is going on in chat here? Uh, is the RC required on the shield ground? Have never found concrete answers on that. Um, so I have not either. It seems to be a good practice of doing something along those lines, either an RC filter or at least a resistor. Like I've seen one mega ohm resistors to ground. I've seen um, uh, inductors uh, with a resistor and a capacitor. I've seen a bunch of different configurations of connecting the um, the shield, uh, the sleeve of the cable to to the ground plane somehow. So you want you want it to be just a shield. You don't connecting it directly to ground. I've seen plenty of 
cheaper boards that do that but everyone who is doing anything a little bit uh, less cut every corner way does add something in there so um, that, that is basically by looking at teardowns of a lot of hardware that's my conclusion on this you don't want any DC current through it yes agreed yes And yeah, Sylvain and uh, <laughs> and uh, Jared, yeah, you you are working on interesting things in similar realm, as far as I can tell. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So we still need what one, two, three, four ish. So one thing I want to do is probably move this. Make more space. Maybe move this. The overlap here will not be a big deal. Then uh, let's uh, move this out of the way as much as possible. Let's shorten this. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze it in onto the schematic sheet. Ah, uh, come on, you are too big. Oh yeah, I can do this. There we go. That's probably the closest I can go to the border here. So we can, come on, select it. Nope, there we go. Then wire like this, and then like this. We can rename this USB-C USB 2.0, like this. We don't need the whole. We should actually call it what the part name is, right? Probably. Type C. I don't know. We will see. So that's that. J1. That's a good orientation here. Okay, clean, clean. We will have to keep bring these back in. And figure out so I need the resistors here uh, and I need the test pads test pads test pads test pads and another test pad all right so let's connect these they definitely need to be connected there we go and can do so this is plus can we if I move it out I could probably connect it there but I need to move this whole thing here to the left to make a little bit more space because the SDA and SCL stuff or yeah I can move this that's a better solution probably there we go yeah, that's better. I didn't have to move the other stuff. There we go. Okay, cool. USB end, and I have to move the test pad uh, labels so that they are not overlapping. There we go. And we need the resistors. So they are single page one of guy. Well, no, that's actually, this thing is a multi-page uh, design. Uh, so if you go in here, this is uh, you have a lot of the circuitry is in uh, uh, subsheets, which is uh, very reasonable, especially because we have a copy of two uh, of a lot of the design. So if you look here, you have the FX2, and this is part of the um, ICE40, but uh, a lot of the I/O stuff and the bank stuff is handled here, sheet of I/O banks. And in there you have uh, 
um, the I.O. banks coming out and connected to two subsheets which uh, represent the same circuit and there is a copy. Uh, 11 by 17, yeah, like put everything in one sheet. Yeah, it's, I, I would, if I had a plotter, oh, I need a plotter. Ah, I need a plotter. That's a thing I need. <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh, uh, Windell and Lenore would approve. If you don't know who that is, these are the uh, founders and owners of uh, Evil Mad Scientist. <laughs> they would approve a plotter idea. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, oh, yeah, I want the resistors. So what we did, so we need the 5.1K resistors. They are set. They have to be 5.1K. So let's copy this. Uh, okay. That is reasonable. I like to keep this on a double dot. Uh, yeah, and then ground should be here. So edit. 5K1. That's the correct nomenclature, right? 5.1K, 5K1. <laughs> yeah, they the plotters. Yeah, plotters can be huge. If you have like a flat sheet, uh, massive plotter, it really takes up like twice as much space as the piece of sheet paper you are printing on or plotting on. Uh, they are awesome though. And then you have uh, the plotters that have the paper that shifts through it. They are much smaller surface area, but they are also pretty cool. Uh, I did an internship at an architecture uh, studio like when I was still in high school. They had one of those plotters. That was really cool. Like having a, a rapidograph uh, pens in there that were plotting on paper on like this thin uh, plastic type of uh, transparency. Ah, oh, so cool. Uh, yeah, good memories. <laughs> the cool thing is <laughs> Uh, I'm so proud of that. I managed to, I, I had to draw the same thing in, what happened? That's not what I wanted. Oh, control D, wait. Is that a shortcut? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I didn't even realize that is a shortcut. Symbol? It has data sheet in here. It's a Mauser link. And if I press Control D, it opens in the browser the data sheet. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that it's a shortcut. Oh, I learned something today. Cool. You just Control D the part and open the data sheet for it. That is so cool. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I take that. That's a nice lesson. So how do I... What's, uh, was it then out D to, to make a copy? Duplicate is C, just C, yeah, right. It's a, it's a different shortcut than on the PCB. And then O should organize them. Uh, auto place fields, yeah. O, yep. So that would be auto place fields with O. But um, but I still probably want to put them in there. Yeah, I I, I wish they take uh, unified the stuff. There's another thing, for example. So if I select elements in a schematic, let's not break stuff though. Uh, if I select uh, multiple items in the schema uh, schematic, I can press an edit, edit, and then I can edit fields of more than one thing at a time, I thought. There was a way of doing that. Anyways, so there was some way of editing multiple items 
in multiple parts, they broke it out into its own dialogue in the PCB new. So I think when uh, they are still unifying things and changing the schematic format for the uh, like file format and stuff, so uh, they are fighting different bat uh, other battles at the moment. But yeah, unification of the shortcuts and UI would be very much appreciated. Even if it breaks uh, muscle memory, I'm fine with that if it makes things just more consistent and more reasonable down the road. I can learn a new new shortcut. I, I, I'm not that old. <laughs> yeah, so. There we go. Uh, cool, so we have the pull downs. Let me see. Vialign Right, so I think they have to be center so that they Yep and Then again center There we go Okie dokie. So yeah, we have the two resistors. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I think that's correct. Now the question is, can we squish it down a little bit? Uh, tab. Like this. Maybe I should put the test pads here on the right side. Would that make more sense? Or maybe even put them here. Yeah, that makes more sense, I think. Yeah. Something like that. And then I can junction, junction, junction. And then I can squish this down. Yeah, all the other is, well, Oh, yeah, the resistor, the labels. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point. I can do this. That's all right. Yeah, you, you are correct. They are labeled, but the values are inside the square. So that's fine. That's good. And I think what we can also do is I can put this in here. Now let's see if this will fit. Woo, it fits. Ha 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 ha. Very good. We got it. We got it on this schematic. Success. Okay. So next thing. I don't think I want this to be Come on, wrong symbol. Come on, dude. Yeah. Yeah, they were nicely aligned here, so you could find them all. Um, so maybe I should. Ah, yeah, yeah. Will that fit? Yeah, it would fit vertically in here, so we could have them all in a in a array like this. Something like that. Uh, move. Yeah, it's center, center. And then we can move this one. Yeah, that seems like a neat solution here. And then field reference move. Uh huh. Okay. So now we have at least the test pads in one uh, one row, so they can be visually found easier. So that's cool. Alrighty. righty. 
<laughs> Keycard Knightly has Control D as a duplicate in his schema. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I'm sure this will. They will fix this kind of stuff eventually. Um, there was a big pass of uh, UI fixes. Um, a retired Adobe engineer who was working on UI, he jumped in and did a huge revamp of a lot of dialogues and a lot of consistency changes. That was a good thing. I was that was a really good thing they did, and they broke a lot of like assumptions people had about KiCad, but uh, it did clean up the dialogues a lot. Like the fact that we have in the board design this unified. Uh, board settings uh, dialog is one of the re that's why we have it same thing with the settings preferences having a preferences this looks very adobe obviously right but uh, i think this is an improvement it was all scattered all over the thing with bajillion of different dialogues in different places under different drop down menus so it is much more consistent this way and easier to find if you know that it is now in one place <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you're coming in new to the project, it's definitely much more intuitive. But yeah, for those that are using it on a regular basis, this is a little bit of a pain, but I like the fact that they are not shying away from making like changes like this. This is the right thing to do, in my opinion, to improve the UI over time, instead of just, we cannot touch it because we have people that have muscle memory with this. So. I that I mean that camp. All right, so uh, there we go. So that's done. Now let's uh, add the footprint to this. Mm. Huh? USB Type C zip. Interesting. Uh, okay, so I want a footprint here. Yeah, I will clean up the fields later. That's. Uh, USB C. There it is. HRO. It's a GCT. So you can see what weird footprints. So these are vertical footprints. So the connector like pokes out of the board. So that these are these footprints. Um, they're pretty nice actually because you have them in line and you have access to the pins on the side. So from the engineering standpoint of uh, debugging this connector, this is not bad. Um, but from mechanical standpoint, it's like it's it's like this pillar sticking out of your PCB. So yeah, um, yeah. This is the 2.0. So we have two. We have the Palcon UTC16G and the HRO. So the HRO is the one we will be using. Cool. And is this correct? Cancel. This is correct. Oh, I have to delete this. This is not correct anymore. We have to put a different value here. I'd rather not have a value in there than have a wrong one. So yeah. All right, so. That's that. Now F8, annotate, update PCB, close. There we go. And we will have to delete this. But I need a very short break and I'll be right back. And then we can continue on the PCB layout. So there we go. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back.
Okie dokes, I'm back. So, one thing I want to catch up on is uh, all the wonderful new follows. <laughs> Pure Savage, thank you for your follow. Welcome to the stream. Same thing to Electric Trick. Uh, Fringer974, wonderful. Thank you so much for the follow. Trollkong, thank you. Franz NL. Adrian Jinky. There are more software. Wow, that's a hangman's moose. I think. Did I already say hello? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> May I owe you why? Oh, yeah. Is that what the nick is? May. AOUI, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to parse this, but yeah, welcome to the stream. I, I think I already told you hello, but yeah, thank you. And, uh, and Noyob, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so we continue work on the uh, Glasgow FPG debugger digital interface explorer. I, what I did, I finished, is having these. So yeah, I can't move. Is uh, finished the schematic for the USB-C connector 2.0. Uh, so for just for USB 2.0 USB-C connector, man, that's a mouthful. They have to come up with a with a better naming for these connectors. Maybe it is USB-C Gen 1. No, it's not even Gen 1. Gen 1 is 5 gig, right? It's 3.3.1. .3 ah, well, anyways, it's. There should be a better nomenclature. It's the USB-C connector that is not capable of the high speeds or whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have the resistors and we have the USB connector. So this USB connector is going bye-bye. Oh, this is locked. So they are preventing you from deleting by by asking twice, which is nice. So let's clean this up. Yeah, I could select the traces here and just, uh, yeah, I probably should reroute this stuff anyways. So if I do this and then go in select and then filter selection, I can want no footprints, tracks, vias, text items, no, drawings, no, board outline and I include zones, no. So yeah, and then uh, I can just delete it. There you go. <laughs> Just in case, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have a USB C connect, USB connector under the other connector. Then you get like a sandwich of USB connectors. It's like, what happened here? Oh, we just blindly soldered on stuff onto your board. <laughs> mm. Or even better, if you have like a computer game, you know how the like you have clipping of objects. That would be even better. Like two two co USB connectors in the same place in like. Mushed together. <laughs> oh man, horrible. USB plus letter equals physical connector, USB plus number. Yeah, but I have to say it's like this is USB C, USB 2.0 connector. Uh, so, so USB C 2.0. That would be the abbreviation, right? So USB-C 2.0 connector. Let's call it that way. USB 2.0 C, or that way. Yeah, I, I think that's that's uh, that's the way to to call this. Uh, okay, so one thing I have to do because I hate these reference markers. Uh, so I do edit footprint. 
uh, delete this one and then move this one to uh, FAP and then save to the board and then I can move this and we can have it in the center position here and then we can do the same thing yeah I cannot edit this at the same time so the thing I wanted to show you and I'm not sure this I will be able to use this here there is a new a feature that I didn't realize existed it's like edit text and graphic properties there is this thing, but I don't think it is reacting to selections. So I can't just select a few objects and open up this edit uh, window. I have not seen an, a way of doing that. This is a massive omission if you ask me. Footprint references, footprint values, other footprints fields. So I can say it's like, please change all footprint references. And I still don't understand how this selection mechanism works, where you have like, I want just diodes. Is that how it works? But it, it didn't work when I tried it. Uh, so I have to play with that dialogue and learn how to use it better, I think. And then set layer default values and association set specific values, thickness and which layer. Yeah, I wish I could just select these uh, these here then right click and edit but I can't can I I thought that was possible before did they disable that function flip rotate move move exactly duplicate create array align distribute they don't have a way of me editing the layer on these as far as I can tell Oh, hey Jordi, welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah, I already told everyone that uh, you are on the hook for the uh, icebreaker Bitsy. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you got what you asked for. <laughs> no, just kidding. Thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah. Big, big shout out to, to Jordi for taking on that project. I really appreciate it. So yeah, anyways, I cannot edit layers here easily, but I can, I have to do it one by one. So that's why uh, when I did my changes to uh, originally to the Glasgow here, uh, what I did is actually open the files in um, in a terminal. I don't have it here anymore, but uh, open it into terminal open in VI and use regex replace to essentially edit the file. That was that was how I did it because that's how I used to do do this, but there should be a better dialogue I think to the to this kind of changes in the future. Yeah, regex, yeah. So yeah, let me let me show you uh, uh, gnome terminal let me open a terminal here and then um, like this let's make it bigger uh, and I went to projects Glasgow uh, Glasgow work board no hardware board Glasgow Jesus this path is long and then um, VI uh, keycat PCB and then you get this is the format that the files are saved in we don't need it that big uh, but yeah this is this is how this uh, uh, the format looks like it's basically uh, Lisp sexpies um, so s expressions and the abbreviation is sexpy uh, so yeah Lisp is sexy I guess uh, <laughs> I, I am a fan of Lisp, just FYI. And uh, you essentially get this, where you have uh, those symbols. The mistake I think Kikat is doing, these should be actually strings and they should be quoted. I know there is like some feature changes that this will actually be quoted properly. But yeah, symbols should stay like they are because they are symbols. And then you, you have uh, this kind of stuff, which is uh, case sensitive and it should be a string. 
but it's not. Um, and uh, but uh, you can really easily edit this with regex. Yes, yes, that's that's correct. Yeah, electronic eel like regex said editing. They, I've, there are some dialogues that support already regex. I think I've seen that. But uh, what is really cool is all the number fields can take uh, equations. So you can actually write 2 divided by 4 plus 5 to not do the calculation on a calculator separately, but you can do it directly in KiCad. It's a nice feature. I really enjoy that, and I use that quite a lot, actually. So yeah, this is uh, regex that I wrote for uh, changing references here. So we have. Uh, I capture this uh, for uh, this reference here, so I get the footprint reference C. Uh, so I have capacitors, then the position at, and then uh, which layer, and then I have a few lines. So it is matching actually three lines of text. Um, if we can, I make it match. Yeah, I can make it match, and then I replaced it essentially with. So I took the first part here, which was in the brackets, um, as uh, backslash one, and then at position. So I basically just took the first part that I matched to and then uh, moved it to somewhere else. It's like, this is fairly basic, uh, a fairly basic tool uh, for, um, for editing files. And it's like this regex stuff for find and replace is very, very nice. and. Uh, Learning a little bit of regex stuff uh, is really worth it, I think. It's a very good tool to have in your uh, toolbox. So yeah, let me match this uh, F, no, B uh, fab. Yeah, and then it automatically already matches. This is also a very important. This is something KiCad should do. If you have any of uh, these tools that match stuff, they should live show you stuff that is being matched. So. When I have this dialog here, um, I edit graphic properties. This should automatically highlight in the background uh, the things that uh, are selected here. It's like, oh, footprint references. Mark all footprints references. Then you have the filter and uh, type C. Then it should shrink the matches. So always be immediate with your response on what you're doing. Do not make the user ever have to imagine what you're actually trying to do. That is a very important, in my opinion, UI design trait. Immediate response to your input. So this dialog needs to be updated so that when you I'm matching footprint references, it marks them all on the PCB. Um, so that's my rant about UI, UI design. All right. so. Uh, this is what I did here with the regex. Um, 11 droids, welcome. Thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. So yeah, uh, let's see what we can do here. Mm, how much space will we need? So this has to be centered. Yeah, this is the question I don't have an answer for yet. How far does this have to go into the PCB? Uh, my uh, So I see that the micro USB connector has a notch here for the shield. I personally prefer the USB connectors to stick out a little bit. The reason is if someone decides to put it in a case, uh, if you have a wall here along this edge, if you recess the USB connector, it is harder to do a good case design because you have to make the zero thickness wall here or make a really large opening so that you can shove in the USB cable into there. So I think it is better to have it poke out a little bit out, outside of the PCB so you can create a nice... Um, Does that footprint have a FFAB layer? Yeah, it does. Yeah, there's margins, comments, user. Yeah, the, the FAB layer is already on there, but the FAB layer doesn't show um, any indication of how much it should poke out 
at or not. Uh, so uh, one thing we can definitely delete is remove this. So we will not need that anymore. And this, we should keep the keep out here. So this is keeping out uh, traces near the edge of the PCB, which is reasonable. Come on, let me select you. Yeah, zone outline. Oh, come on. I really wish they, they fixed this. Yeah, see, I have to press Alt to force the disambiguation algorithm from doing this stupid thing. It's like, why can't I? Now I can click on it. <laughs> like, what? Why? I'm clicking on the, the, the graphic, and it doesn't always want me to do this. Like, zone outlines, why do they have a precedence now suddenly? Uh, and I have to struggle every time to select them. So I did submit it as a bug report to KiCad, and and the re response was like, I cannot reproduce it, it's fine. It just needs to be documented that the Alt key overrides the selection. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, thanks. So yeah, it is an issue and I keep having it. And I don't think this is, I've seen other people have a similar issue. Jordi actually reported it the other day too, that he had the issue. All right. So, let me document the workaround. That's, that's the solution here. <laughs> uh, sigh. All right, so we need the, this guy needs to be moved. Uh, have plenty of space. We could squish all this stuff much, much further. This is not. Also, this. Why is it not? Yeah, that's just not bad. It can stay like this in theory. Yeah, USB N and B. I think I will connect them on the back. Aren't these connected together, these two? Let's look at the data sheet here. Has a distance from the product edge in the data sheet? Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a different connector, I assume, than this one. Uh, this is wrong there. This one. Recommended PCB layout tolerance. Connector front edge, sure. Yeah, this one does not, it's a different one that you're talking about, uh, electronic eel. Or eel, I just need to abbreviate your name, I, I think. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah, this one doesn't have it. And you say XKB, is that the other one here? Don't have it open yet. USB-C. USB connectors. Ah, there we go. I knew you will come to the rescue here. Maybe I should just open it here and then drag the tab. There we go. Thank you so much. There we go. Let's see. Yes. So. Uh, where is the, mm, 
not seeing the measurement yet. Does it say here in the description or something? Product edge, product edge. Ah, recommended PCB layout. No tolerance and specified product edge there, product edge. And then that is 2.6 millimeters from this hole. So let's uh, see what that means. We need a finer resolution thing here, I think. 2.6. Uh, <laughs> that is pretty much to the edge then. So it is not hanging out at all. Yeah. So 2.6 is the whole length of the of the metal case. Is that product edge maybe? Yeah. I think that might actually mean to the product edge as in the product being the connector itself. That's what I'm concerned with. Um, yeah, I think I will just put it like halfway-ish or something. Let me take this one out of the way here. Yes, yes, yes. What? What happened? <laughs> Why did it do this? That was weird. Okay. Uh, how much space do I want? Something like that from the copper. The question is basically how far, how deep can I go? Yeah, I know that's exact. That's that's part of the reason why I want to. Um, it's. Several reasons, like make more space is t to hang it out, uh, but also like allow it for having some wall thickness around it for the uh, plastic case or whatever, if someone decides to do that. Also, if you see these holes here are now overlapping my pogo pins. But I think if I have here, how much do we have distance? 0.6, half a millimeter. Will that half a millimeter be enough? It seems like it should be enough, right? From the from the uh, copper edge, that seems generous. Yeah, one millimeter overhang should be enough. That's true. That is very true. Uh, so this would be the end of the connector. Currently, we have 1.3 millimeters. So I think we have like a working distance of 0.3 millimeters here. It's like half a millimeter to the copper pad is one way of doing this. One millimeter overhang sounds like a good idea. So let's see if I move it the one, two, three. Yeah, that is doable. The pogo pin pads have to be moved. As I pretty much expect it, they will have to. We can move them somewhere here, I guess. One thing that I'm, yeah, so we have these uh, staggered, so N has to be connected and P has to be connected like this. So that will be interesting. Um, pep -pem, pep -pem. So probably from one end and then from the other. Yeah, probably like two C shapes. This is what I'm curious about. This doesn't make sense. These should be the same ones, right? A, B12, A1 and B12, A4 and B9. Oh, I need the pinout uh, of the USB connector. 
app USB C connector pinout because this is referencing pins on the connector. There we go. Let's try take this pin assignment. Come on, give me the full size thing. Thanks. Okay, so A1 and B12. A1 and B12. A1 and B12. A4 and B9. A4 and B9. Oh, this is the V plus. Ooh, interesting. And then A9, B4. So they are next to each other? So this is power. So these two are power and these two are ground. Damn. Yeah, that you made that upstream footprint, that's possible. So yeah. Oh, so it is power. Oh, we didn't label that net? Ooh, bad, bad, bad. We don't have a name for that, that bus. That's, that's not nice. So let's give it a label. It probably needs a different labeling. So X, external VBus. Um, does this need labeling here? Yes, this would needs uh, labels uh, CC1 and CC2. That should do this. And then we have shield. Okay, cool. Then F8, update PCB, close. There we go, XVBus, VBus. Yeah, so that is correct. They are connected together. So that will be fine, fun. Have to figure out how, how to connect this all. Did we now do, uh, yeah, that's what I, I got. So one millimeter hang off, that's okay. We might need to move this. We still need these resistors. I should correct their labels. Ooh, that will be interesting too. Where do I squeeze these guys in? This connector is bigger than the micro USB connector. Hmm. Okay, let me fix the labels. Procrastinate a little bit here. Mm. I don't remember what the values were. Label was 0.406. Point four, point four, point oh six, and this one was point two five oh five. Point two five, point two five, dot point oh five. All right, move. There we go, and then load it. Uh, <laughs> I thought I I changed this. What's going on here? Did I not load it into the PCB? That's weird. Why is this not? Oh, it is moved. Hello. Oh, because this is from, oh, this is from the other footprint. Oh, this is, I'm so dumb. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Two 
0.4.4.06. And then save, done. Good. Move. Let's see how the CCs work. So CC1 is here. So one resistor will go here, and the CC2 is on the bottom, so the other resistor will go on the bottom. Somewhere. <laughs> if we can figure out where to put it. But I think I need to do a squish run here. Also, the, the fiducials next to those footprints are not really necessary to, uh, in either of these two. This is usually it's like my pick and place can do fine job with placement of uh, fine pitch footprints like this uh, with just panel fiducials so I don't know if that's really necessary so we could save on those fiducials some space you usually put fiducials on the panel and not on the on the uh, image that's how this is the naming difference so this would be an image of one PCB so image and then a panel is is panel, right? So you have a panel and an image. Um, so we don't need image fiducials, we just need panel fiducials usually. I thought that was necessary in the past, but I have not seen that necessity yet. It's, it's like we are not also not doing super fine stuff either, so. This is something to ask in the fab house, to be honest, uh, if the contract manufacturer, what uh, what they would require. Okay, so clock IF, clock IF. So the clock IF probably wants to be moved down here so we can make more space. And then we can do this one can be squished and we can make more space here. So yeah, a little bit of shuffling still necessary. So this chip actually is an interesting part Yeah, that is nearby. Yeah, I know. So if this fiducial would go on the left upper corner instead, um, or right upper corner, that we have plenty of space here. <laughs> we can. There's there's still a lot of space on this PCB if you think about this. Uh, if I, for example, here all these parts like vertically could be compressed, um, but uh, horizontally we can uh, definitely gain some space here and definitely gain space here because we saved some space. Considering if you don't think about silkscreen at all, it's, that would definitely be a way of doing it. Um, that's what I, I think about silkscreen last. It's basically use the space that is left over uh, for silkscreen. Um, most important for me is the form factor and that the layout is clean usually. Okay. Oh, this part, right. So um, this is actually a search protecting part. So the TPD, let's open this just really quick. Uh, Control D, right? That's what it was. Let's try to, this is a current limit, limited switch and D plus, D minus ESD protection. So essentially it protects from ESD as well as it um, limits the current to charge to, to charge the resistors on the, uh, on the device side if you have higher capacitance than uh, the limit uh, that the standard requires. So um, Continuous current rating 5 and 1.5 amps, depending what which part you choose. So uh, you will not really short this thing. It will current limit to 500 milliamps, no matter what you do. So that's, that's fairly cool. I've never used that part before, so I didn't even know that it existed. But this is cool that it exists. I might use it on more designs in the future. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move this clock here. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, come on, dude. Uh, yeah, it should walk around, but that's fine. Let's uh, just move this for now. Uh, these are differential pairs. I should probably route them as differential pairs. But let's move them out of the way first, because the differential pair routing is somewhat tricky at times. Oh, come on. Huh, interesting. So this is the colliding part here. Uh, Extal in, crystal in. Crystal out, crystal out. Why is this routed the way it is? We could go with the crystal in this way, under the chip. Is that is that a bad idea? Does it cause issues if you have the extal in just routed under the crystal? That's uh, something, question to the chat. <laughs> is that a problem if I did that? But uh, yeah, I think otherwise we will squish this in and move. Well, let me just remove the tracing here. Like that. There's power and ground between the backside traces and the crystal. Uh, well, if I'm routing it on the top layer, I can only rely on the shielding. Well, it is, yeah, on the back layer, yes. Uh, so the green, green traces are fine. I'm talking about routing the extal in under the, the part and not... Uh, uh, not the other way around. Also, I should be NVB. This can be, this doesn't have to be here. The reset can also go here. So let, let's see. So we can do this. Oh, come on. Oh, because do the, I will do B, B, edit, uh, walk around. Okay. I said walk around. Why is it? Yeah, it's just pushing parts around. This is annoying. So, Via should there should be like more flexibility in how you set up the uh, pseudo auto router uh, or the semi man half manual auto router or whatever it is you call this uh, where you can say it's like yeah but the vias please keep them in the place where they are only the one that I'm moving and stuff like that it's like I that is all these slight small annoyances that I have. <laughs> So, but I know you are here for me to complain about stuff. I know that. I know. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so these are the balance capacitors. We can push them in and then A debugging mini modem, yeah. <laughs> Will you fix that thing so you can do both channels at the same time? <laughs> yeah, that was that was. I was telling you all about the challenge. It's like part of the challenge we were using mini modem for a thing, and uh, that was interesting. Hopefully, we can.
fix a few bugs <laughs> before we need it the second time. Short, yeah. Small, yes. Good, yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you for confirming, Jared. So, yeah. Yeah, I did that in the past, too, but I did get weird other complaints from people in the past, so I'm trying to be cautious to not to not make someone's heart rate too high. There we go. So that will be interesting now because I still need to get that trace out here, right? Uh, there. Something along these lines. And can I still squish it in here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have plenty of space. Okay, so that would be this. Yeah, I can still go north with it. Although this already overlap. Yeah, that should be fine. We did gain a few 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 things here for the routing. Should be fine. It will be fine. Famous last words. Ground, good, good, good. Uh, this belongs to the C1 and then VBus. So VBus. Oh, man, man, man. So we need the VBus to be connected here. Then the CC1 has to be connected to here, but also to ground. So, dump, uh, dump, dump. We can either have a via to ground plane and then ignore this, or we can just put this here and then route. No, we cannot route between the paths here. This is, there's not enough space because this is, I think, a, is that two one? This is 15, right? Yeah, it's 15. And this one is 25, I think. Yeah, 25. Yeah, so the VBA, so the, these definitely have to be moved. So uh, let's uh, do that while we are at it. Let's do, how about that? A little bit out of the way. Good, good, good. Right, so the next thing I wanted to do is move this. Uh, we can route it later. Move it with the traces connected to, to a degree. Uh, Yeah, so let's get that one out. Oh, wow. That's interesting what happened here. Why are you being so weird? There we go. The C reset. Yeah, I have to figure out what how it is cutting the planes around. Right, these these were further to the left before before I made changes and cleaned up things. Okie dokes. Um yeah, so let's do 
this. Uh, two five. Will that work? Yes. So ground is connected. I should connect the other ground too. So we should probably do this like that. Oh, although, yeah, right, 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 right. I probably should have the via, then the ground pad, and then the other pad. So I think this is the correct configuration here. Not that it really matters, but. There we go. Uh, 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 there we go. That is the correct configuration, right? Although in this case, no, that is not true because these are just the load capacitors. They are not decoupling capacitors. Right, right, right. So that's a different situation here than it would be otherwise. So let's do this. And then we should do this. This is a signal, so let's do that. Uh, or we do this the other way around. Maybe that's better. Yeah, let's do it symmetrically. So that's cool. Then we have the V bus, which is this one, and the USB N. So let's move these. Shift and click and move. All right, so that will be fun. How much more space do I need? That is the main main puzzle question here. USB V, USB V, USB V, V USB, v, USB. Is that, are you serious? This is the whole V USB. Wait a second. How is that connected? Is that going to the inner plane? There should be an inner plane that doing that, correct? Huh. Okay, so how is that supposed to work? So it goes into here and then to the five volts? Is that what it is? So it has these thin, thin traces connecting here. Wow, okay, wait, that, that doesn't complete, compute to me. So let's see how it looked like before. Um, if I open recent, Come on. Oh, weird. Why did that? Oh, because it was, oh, it's just the VUSB on the back here. Oh, okay. Phew. Okay. It's, uh, all right. All right. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm good again. So this is how it looked like before. Maybe we should make a screenshot, right? Uh, this is actually better readable. Or maybe let's do this and disable silk screen and and then I don't want I at the end I don't want to make a screenshot because I managed to freeze this computer before with making screenshots. So yeah. Um there you go. So that's how it looks. So we let's let's try to think about this. Um, we have the pin connection. Then we have a white track with the inductor going this way to the main pin three, and the five volt goes out the other way. And then we have VUSB. This is probably an enable pin or something. Um, 
that uh, is connected over here. Okay, so this is the main track and these are the USB traces. Good. All right, it's not as, it's not scary. We can do this. <laughs> Thanks. I uh, thank you very much. So let's open it up again. So VUSB, there is, I know, I want to see someone else's layout of this as a reference because I know people figured this out before already. Um, should I have, I probably should have some connections on the back of the board for this. The ground would be essentially, uh, what is it, like a really thick trace, something like that. So pin that down. I don't think I can connect here. Yeah, it is not getting through. Um, then we have this guy, it should be also possible to connect. So then we have the VUSB stuff. So the CC is the interesting part. How do I do this? Uh, so maybe this is not wide enough, is it? Yeah, I can't get a trace through here. So, uh, probably we'll do this on the inner layer at the end. That is a way of doing this, I think. So basically go like this, then move all this stuff to the right. Let's move these. Let's make more space. There we go. There we go. And uh, Kathanis, uh, what does this board do when it's done? Uh, the best way of doing uh, this is the best reference I can give you. It's probably the most uh, the best way of explaining to you what it is. Let's see. It's a digital interface explorer. It's a tool for connecting to any type of digital thing and talking its protocol at a reasonable speed. So it's a, it's a hacking, debugging, engineering tool that we are working on. Okay, so I move this so I can do this. Shift click, deselect, deselect, deselect. And now I can move this. That should make enough space on the left for me. The VBus will be interesting. Can I get the VBus connected on the back? Yes, I can. But I probably should just put it in the in the inner layer. I don't know. Yes, this is this is these are changes that I'm making for uh, for the mass production at Crowd Supply. Yes, this is a process to to. Uh, improve the board uh, to a way where the mass production the, the, this this USB C change is uh, running running change essentially it's not really necessary for manufacturing but there were so many people 
uh, so incredibly exact, ex excited. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I probably can have. Yeah, that's that's good to know. Yeah, I might have them uh, further away. Thank you for the tip. Um, that's that's a useful one. So I will. Pr the precedence will be for the USB pin connections, and uh, secondary will be power and or like power and uh, signal traces are the most important and the cc stuff well what gives <laughs> we will see put them on the back on mine really desirable mm. i they could be totally on the back of the board we have population on the back of the board here but uh, I think we have space on the front for these, so it shouldn't be a problem. So ground pins, ground pins, VBus, 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 we should connect this here. I will figure out if I need to. Um, and then I can do this. And this, there you go. And we can do the thin signal trace from here and connect it to here. There we go. And then we need ground, which is probably a 250. Uh, it could be thicker, right? But then we go up to 450. Oh, this is even thicker. Wow. What is it? Oh, 750. Ooh, little chunker. I don't really want it to go all the way to the pad, to be honest. I want it to neck down here. So let's go neck down to, to this. Oh, cool. Thank you for sharing. I, I will definitely open that up. Thank you, Boppet. Uh, cool. It's like more design references, the better. So let's see what you did there. Oh, yeah. You're very similar to what I did here on the top. Neat. Came up with similar solution. Oh, you added the CCs on the back here. OK. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you left it there. Interesting. Yeah. I would, I think what I would like to do is actually have this length be the same one as this length. And then will that, yeah, if I do this, right. So if I do this like S, the, the, the like two zigzag curves, that should work. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, all right, so there's a bunch of people that joined and I didn't say hello yet. So let's do that really quick. Told how, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Introspective Samurai, 11 droids. Yeah, thank you for the follows. Welcome to the stream, you all. That's very nice. Carthanis, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Okie dokes. Uh, oh, yeah, because we have those vias. But uh, so let's just try to route it on one side first and then try to figure out what we do next. So the CCs I will ignore for the minute. Um, 
Hey, what's happening here? Oh, this is super thick. Wait, wait, wait. That's not what we want. Um, dump a dump. And then N would be the first one. So probably, how do we do this? How do we do this? Oh, that's why, because they are swapped. I see. That is the problem. Yeah, it is harder than what it looks, yeah. Because you do have to swap them. Oh. Nasty, nasty. So what if, what if I do some swap first? The problem with USB, you cannot really swap uh, P and N because of the pull-up resistor stuff. C on left, C on right. Yeah, it is very unsatisfying to me too, to have a bunch of vias. But you, it's pretty obvious, this, this is, I heard that from several people, those USB-C connectors, they have the, essentially the lines in the, re, the opposite order of what all the chips currently have as DNP uh, and uh, NNP outputs. Yeah, inside the chip, right, on the TDP. TPD, yeah, but uh, what about this uh, FX2? Yeah, this, I, I assume this is this part, right? Yeah, TPD, yeah, it doesn't matter because this is uh, um, just an ESD protector. The problem is you cannot swap uh, USB P and D uh, N for the host because it is using the pull up on uh, on one or the other line to detect if it is low speed or high speed USB. Uh, and so you can't just swap them. It's really annoying. I wish we could just swap them uh, on the connector, but we can't. So we have to either swap it here with VIAS, it's like heat, or we just uh, wing it and do something like yeah, what is the B8 and A8? That's also a question I have here. Oh, these are the SNs. Okay, okay, okay. So they are not populated. So essentially you went like this and then you went like this. Okay. Yeah, this is not bad, I think, at the end. This is not a bad solution. Uh, if I block myself so basically you would go this way, one. Why is this a thicker trace? What is going on here? 19s? Oh, because of, uh, hmm. So diff pair to get the right impedance. I guess that's what it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, God, where I don't remember route. Uh, differential pair alt six, right? So something like this. Yeah, so that would do this. And then N has to go here and P has to go here. 
So we could have two wires and then route it in the back or in the f to the front. That would be an option. So let's try this. And this will break now diff pair. This will be something weird. for a test pad. Okay. Okay, let's have a drink. Yeah, we need bias anyways for the test pad on the back. But yeah, um make more space. We definitely need more space here. Let's do this. And then, wait, that's wrong. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this. I wanted N like that. something like this, and then this one. So, like this. There we go, so now, now it's nice and symmetric. Now uh, B, uh, pa, 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 P, yeah, I wish now I could just cross over here, but no, I actually probably should go just around, right? Yeah. Oh God, the swapping is stupid. This is really annoying. I don't like it. You're just relying here at the end of uh, this being electrically re robust enough. <sighs> okay, so that's that, and then uh, we go to the bottom, and then place another via here. Yeah, something like that. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, well that's that is what it is, I guess. <clears throat> We still need the via for the USB N because USB P we can connect in the back now to the test pads. That's good. So um, I want to continue the routing of the diff pair. Come on, dudes. There we go. Yeah, we could pl we have plenty of space here. I could even even move this to the right further. Um, oh yeah, I should connect this. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Let's finish routing this guy. Yeah, 
Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I would, I think that's that would be an improvement to have a scheme where you have two vias to connect them. So essentially, I would have a via here and here for one direction, and and then the other one to have it like really symmetric electrically. So that's that's not a yeah. I I agree. The problem then is I probably have to put the test pads on two opposite ends of this. Well, I guess it is not that big of an issue. <laughs> uh, also, this connector is weird uh, because it is just 2.0. I have not seen, I've seen only one that is not like some Korean or Chinese uh, connector manufacturer that are making uh, um, just pure 2.0 small pin count uh, USB-C connectors. The, the, the other USB-C connectors, I think it might be a little bit cleaner routing for the higher speed differential pairs. But yeah, um, it's, it might not be that big of a deal at the end. <laughs> that's, that's my assumption at the moment. We are probably uh, having anxiety here about something that is not really an issue. That's my take on this. All right, so we still need the other CC. I still want to keep it on the top here if I can. Definitely the, we have to route it on the back, which is fine. Let's make space here. Something like that. Uh, let's move, nope. Do we want to do this like this, or maybe we should rotate this and do it like this? That will look nicer, wouldn't it? <clears throat> yeah, that will look nicer. So that's that. <clears throat> and then we need uh... oh I should rotate this and then connect it to this ground correct yes 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 that's what I should do there we go This is not an ESD connect uh, uh, issue. This is not an issue with this. Uh, this e the problem is uh, how the um, uh, how the um, pinout is from this uh, FX2 chip. So FX2 chip has P and N, and this goes in that order out and not in another order. If it came out in uh, the reverse order, I probably would be easier to route because then I would P and N, and then N would connect here, and then P would connect here. This would be easier if they were reversed, I think. And rotating in 45 steps, this is a setting in preferences. Preferences, uh, PCB new, and you set it here in a rotation angle. So you set it from 90 to 45 degrees, and then you have 45 degree rotations. You can put it to any angle you want. Yeah, you're welcome. Connector on the back of the board. Yeah, yeah, that would be an, an alternative solution to this. It's a good point. But yeah, I, I, I'm not putting the connector on the back. <laughs> uh, that would be neat, though. That's true. OK, let me move this one. Yeah, 
this is now colliding, great. Uh, ooh, I don't want to break this. Let's do this, 490. There we go. And then uh, that should give us enough space here. We still can move this to the right. There we still can, can uh, make, make space to the right. That's not a problem. I just wanted to make it symmetric if I can, but uh, let's see if that works. Oh, it should go here, right? Yeah, we don't have space for that. Uh, let's do this like that. Or, haha. <laughs> yeah, let's just put it here. Well, this is not in the courtyard. Na 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 na. Dent the tent, the tent, the tent. Uh, maybe like this. Yeah, let's do that. That like this. It's not perfectly symmetric this way, but it should do the job. Uh, pa pump, pa pump, seven fifty. Oh, this is, uh, we are at uh, 450 here. There we go. And then we can do the signal one, 115. There we go. All right. And now we need still the, these two for the shield. We have to figure out where to put them. Okay. So. Do we have space on the top here? Yeah, we could put one on the top and one on the bottom <laughs> and then have it through the shield. That would be weird. Um, should I think I want them linear. I want them linear here. Oh, come on, really? It's like, this is how big of the... Something like this. Yep. And then... Yeah, I know I am violating the courtyard here. I am aware of this. I understand. But I just want to move on with my life. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I have to connect the shield, right? <laughs> yeah, let's be, let's be, let's be mean. Okay, I might, I might clean this up off stream. I don't know, but for now it has to do. Okay, um, I will probably create a pour for this. Why is this? This is no, now colliding with something. Oh, come on, guys. Seriously, something internal is having trouble. Yeah, wow. I am curious what it is thinking it is doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that how the pads are being created? Let's see how they are. Oh, huh. Is oval pad, um, Collision detection broken in KiCad now? Is that what it is? Is 
This is not a custom shape. It is an oval, just an oval shape. Uh, unit testing, guys, unit testing. Some kind of UI unit testing, please. <laughs> oh, God, really? Anyway, so I, I think I will just create a pour for this anyways to make that connection to the shield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see how it is like connecting to a weird spot here? Strange. Let's just do this as a walk or work around. Now it worked. <laughs> I have to make construction lines now. <laughs> uh, kids, seriously. All right, cool. Um, let's do that. But then, all right, that's good enough for now. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's on some computers works, on other computers things don't work. I with this the selection issues, it's like the KiCad devs cannot reproduce them because they only happen on my computer and then I hear from some random other person it's like, "Oh, I have the same issues." Okay. So can we have deterministic software sometimes, please? Uh, yeah. It's weird this this whole the, these issues that uh, the UI has are very weird, especially they manifest themselves. Why connect all four? Oh, shield pads? Uh, that's a good question. Why connect all four shield pads? Because OCD, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't want this connection to go through the sh shield and rely just on that. Uh, I would feel it just makes me feel bad if I don't connect those on the board too. Yeah, in theory, you could just connect to one of those. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a really good answer for you. Just something that would make me feel really bad. <laughs> yeah, the DRC, yeah. Yeah, ERC will fail too. Yeah, it's exactly. So at the end, it's more of a, yeah, it just feels bad. Uh, okay, and now we still want to clean this up. Ground can be connected. That's pretty easy. Uh, pump, pump, pump. We just uh, can just do this. That's in the inner plane. And then VBus, that will be interesting. So VBus, should we just do this? Yep, that should do the job. And USBP, we can just connect this here, but we can this is the tricky part because now I have to mess around with the, at least the feed in of the diff, diff pair. What is it trying to align to? I don't understand. Something like that. And then can I place a Vi on here? Uh, like this. No, I can't. This is still colliding. Uh, can we do this? Can we do this? Come on. Will that work? No, this is still too short. Uh, yeah. I would like to put, maybe let me do this. Maybe let's do uh, this way. Start from that side. Oh, 
I see. You are in the way now. Let's do this again. Like this. And then... Like this. And then I can get rid of this. And these are point nineteen, right? Nineteen. Nineteen. 19 and then we have the, everything on the back we can go use 15s here and then connect this to here and this to here we have those weird stubs now which are not pretty they are they are like this dangling things antennas on the end they will make the sprawling sound when the when the signal goes through this, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know, I know. If I have those stupid stubs. At the end, it's just all bad. <laughs> yeah, having those stubs for the test pads, it's like, yeah. Just imagine like one of those like whip antennas where you're like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I could I could put the test pads also completely over those vias um, and just put them mechanically where it makes most sense. Um, because we can put the pogo pins wherever we want. So do something like crazy like that. Like this. And yeah, like one, and then uh, like this, and then yeah, why, why not, you know? Yeah, probably. So yeah, it looks symmetric. I can probably move these now too to make them look prettier. Uh, move. Like this and then have like an offset uh, square pattern for this. Something like that. Then it doesn't look that bad. Wah! Lock that footprint, Peter. Lock it. Lock footprint, please. Thanks. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. Three of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just a second. Let me just place that one via here for the ground. Um, Probably I want something like this. And then, oh, I can't. You don't like it. You don't like it. So, um, let's do this. Something like that. And the ground. Why is this page down, page up? So let's Okay, this is not perfect, but it would do the job, I think. Why I can't why can't I have this via on the same plane here? I can have it on the same plane. So what's the problem? Okay. Shush. It's fine. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's why. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. 
Uh, uh, let's uh, try it again. Let's try this. There we go. That's good enough. Yeah, that looks good. One unrouted. Where is one unrouted? Uh, let's do one unrouted. List unrouted. Oh, yeah. There you go. Because I moved you. Yeah, I probably can put it over the via too. Anyways, okay. Save. And Alt 3. Oh, it's <laughs> we need the 3D model for this, huh? Uh, yeah, so that's looking okay, if you ask me. This will get more cleanup. For sure. Uh, <laughs> we need to move the silk screen correctly. Haha. <laughs> okay, let's do that too before we head off into the into the sunset. B silk there. D plus move. Uh, is this one? Move. Then move. D negative. Yeah, I should uh, change the alignment on these. Doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, safe, safe, safe. Three. Chunk. Okay, that's better. Cool. This doesn't look too horrible, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah, so Mike, that's that's the pads are for the Pogo Pin Pad Tester in production, yeah. Uh, so that I don't have to plug in so the production doesn't require the USB connection. Although on the other hand, that's not a bad thing to test. But it will still test a bunch of um, uh, failure modes for the USB, uh, even in that configuration. So it should be fine. OK, well, I think that would be it for today. The clock ref, oh, yeah, there's more silk screen that I have to adjust. Maybe I can put the clock ref back where it was. Uh, I will try to fiddle that in. But yeah, uh, you have the USB-C connector. Uh, so that is on the uh, icebreaker bit C. That's definitely the pads on here are for hand-wired cables. Um, that is uh, so that you don't need to plug in a connector if you want to like put it into a box or something. That's the bit C for sure. On this one, it's actually for testing, um, like specifically for testing. On the bit C, we could use it also for testing, sure. All right, so that is it for today. Uh, I will definitely keep you up to date how things go um, on Twitter during the week. Or um, yeah, so a thing that I didn't mention yet, I uh, did set up a bridge between IRC and uh, our Discord server for the Glasgow channel. So Glasgow, uh, so Glasgow channel on on uh, Freenode is now connected to the Discord channel. So you, if you join either of them, you will be in the same uh, communication with uh, the developers of Glasgow. So uh, I recommend you join there. Definitely recommend going in Discord because we have a bunch of different FPGA projects on there and not just Glasgow. There is uh, a lot of different projects that we work on there, uh, including Black, uh, Icebreaker and Blackmagic Probe and 
Icebreaker Bits, different synthesizer projects. Like there's a lot of different interesting stuff that we work on there. Uh, so definitely check that out on our Discord. But uh, if you are one of those people that refuses to use modern technologies and sticks to IRC, uh, you can definitely uh, at least uh, follow uh, on the um, uh, on the Glasgow project. So yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, um, I think the USB-C will be hopefully making a bunch of people happy. <clears throat> So let me get a drink before we wrap this up. All right. <laughs> I see burn. Yeah, sideburn. Um, uh, yeah, I see a lot of communities switching off to, over to Discord. It's like I understand the complaints about this, but everything has its issues no matter how you look at it. <laughs> so um, I definitely enjoy using Discord and it definitely helped to coalesce a bigger community of really smart people um, from different projects that I work on. Uh, so that was really a uh, worthwhile move um, going from, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, what was it, Gitter before. Gitter was great, but uh, the trajectory of the project was just, uh, they yeah, uh, I disagree with the direction of the project, so um, so I decided to give Discord a chance, and it turns out to be a really amazing collaboration tool. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, N yeah. Uh, Ninja Bunny is, loves making bots, right? You like you like bots, Bun. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, and. Um, let me think if there's anything else to mention. Yeah, so I will keep you up to date. I will keep working on this. Uh, next stream, we will see. Probably we will keep working on something regarding Glasgow. We will see. I'm not exactly sure yet. I will try to push it as hard as I can uh, to um, finalization as much as I can, including the uh, Pogo pin tester. Um, and uh, otherwise, if there is something else, we will work on that. And just keep an eye out on my Twitter and uh, whatnot. So as always, uh, thank you everyone who is uh, uh, making this possible. Um, like definitely the, um, the subscription on uh, uh, Patreon is very useful and really helps uh, making these streams possible. Uh, same thing with the subscription here on uh, Twitch. Uh, I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much for being part of this and making it possible. Uh, <laughs> Bob and Doug should be on orbit. Yeah, we definitely will have a, um, a watch party with uh, uh, with the Hackersat team. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I hope that uh, it all works out and the backup uh, dates will um, work because Wednesday se doesn't seem perfect. So yeah, tell me from the future uh, how that worked out. And yeah, as always, I would like to say thank you to the Patreons that are in the um, in the shout out tier. So uh, thank you very much for Aki Van Ness, Brennan Ashton, Drew Fustini, Edward Borden, Go Jimmy Pai, Jeff Wang, Jordi Parky Rodriguez, Kelly, Matt Matthias Pritchett, Miha Benovets, Sean C and Tom Keddy. So thank you so much, uh, all of you, for supporting this. And uh, if you have some spare cash you want to drop into the bucket here to help out uh, financing these things, uh, please do. Otherwise, check out the One Bit Squared uh, store for some uh, uh, hardware and some projects. And uh, yeah, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Bye.